Welcome to the part 2 of class full addressing. We will start with the outcomes. In today's session, we have 3 outcomes. Let's see what are they. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number 1. We will recall the various classes of IPv4 address. Outcome number 2. We will understand the purpose of subnet mask. And outcome number 3. We will identify whether the nodes belonging to the same network or different network. Let's recall the various classes of IPv4 address. We know basically there are 5 classes of IPv4 address, class A, B, C, D and E. And we know IPv4 addresses have 4 octets. And if the first octet is between 0 and 127, it is obviously class A. If it is between 128 and 191, it is class B. If it is between 192 and 223, it is class C. If it is between 224 and 239, it is class D. Class D addresses are multicast addresses. And if the first octet of IPv4 is between 240 and 255, then it is class E. Class E is for experimental and research purpose. And we have already seen what is this in the previous lecture. Now, I'm gonna introduce a very important term called the subnet mask. IP addresses are just the identity of the device in the network. If I say there is a device with the IP address 10.5.6.8, we don't know more about the network. With the help of IP address, we can just know what is the identity of the device. But if we want to know who are all in the network, then IP addresses must be accompanied with another parameter and that parameter is the subnet mask. This subnet mask will be usually accompanied by an IP address and this subnet mask only says who are all in the network. IP address says what's the identity of a device in the network. Subnet mask says who are all our neighbors in the network. In a classful world of IPv4 address, class A, class B and class C are accompanied with the subnet mask that is the default subnet mask. I already told you that class A, B and C are mainly for general purpose that we can use for our computers. We have public IP addresses and private IP addresses falling in the class A, B and C. I'm not going to talk about that public and private IP addresses in this lecture. Let's just have these classes that is class A, B and C are general purpose IP addresses. Class D addresses are multicast addresses and class E is for experimental and even research purpose. In a class full world, class A's IP address will always be accompanied with the default mask which is 255.0.0.0. .0 .0. So 255 means all bits are 1, right? All bits are 1 in the first octet. Whenever all bits are 1 in the first octet in binary. In other words, whenever there is a 255 in an octet, it means that is the network portion. So in class A, the default mask, the default subnet mask, this is the default subnet mask in decimal. If the default subnet mask is 255.0.0.0, it means this is class A subnet mask. So when it is 255.0.0.0, it means the first octet is the network portion and the remaining three octets are the host portion. Basically, IP addresses contain two important parts. One is the network portion and the other one is the host portion. Without subnet mask, we can't say which is the network portion and which is the host portion. So every IP address is normally accompanied by the subnet mask this subnet mask is required to say which part is the host portion and which part is the network portion. So in this example, the first octet alone is the network portion and the remaining three octets are host portion. Let's take an example class A address which is 10.5.5.6. In this case, 10 is the network portion and the remaining octets are host portion. If the first octet matches for any different IP addresses, then it do belong to the same network. Such a big network it is just see. Let's take the same class A example that starts with the value 10. So anything that starts with 10 will do belong to the same network. The starting IP address will be 10.0.0.0 and the last, the ending IP address will be 10.255.255.255. In class A, the first octet can be 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or up to 127. So a total of 128 networks are possible in class A. So such a big network, right? So in this network, we can have a maximum of 1 crore 67 lakh 77 thousand 214 hosts 
that are possible per network. That is, since only one octet is reserved for the network portion, we can have a maximum of 2 power 7 networks. Because this octet alone is the network portion. How many bits are there in this network portion? We have a total of 8 bits because this is the first octet. And we know one bit is reserved, right? This is for identifying the class. So we can have a maximum of 7 bits only. So these 7 bits only defines the network portion. So 2 power 7 networks that are possible. It means 128 networks are possible. And in each network, how many hosts can be there? We have a total of 32 bits. Whereas this portion is 8 bits. So we are taking this for identifying the class as well as identifying the network. So 8 bits gone. So we have remaining 24 bits. So these 24 bits that is 2 power 24 hosts can be possible per network. And out of 2 power 24 hosts, only 2 power 24 minus 2 are usable. So always we need to reduce two IP addresses. One is reserved for identifying the network and the other one is for knowing the broadcast address of that network. We will be elaborately dealing about this network address or the network ID and the broadcast address in the classless addressing path. For time being, you just know the maximum number of host minus 2 will be the usable host. In class A, we have lesser number of networks that is 128 networks but where we have more number of hosts in each network. Coming to class B, class B means these two portions will be the network portion and these two octets will be the host portion. So in a class B, if there is an IP address, the first two octets will be the network portion and the remaining two octets will be the host portion. The default mask for class B in classful world is 255.255.0.0. So any IP address, the first two octets should match because the first two octets are the network portion and it doesn't care about the next two octets that is the last two octets. So these last two octets are reserved for hosts. So how many networks that are possible? We know IP addresses are 32 bits long. We have 16 bits here and we have 16 bits here. Out of these 16 bits, we need two bits for identifying the class because 1, 0 is the starting, right? So this 16 minus 2 which is 14. We have 2 power 14 networks possible in class B. That is 16,384 networks possible. And in each network, how many hosts can be possible? So 2 power 16. 2 power 16 is 65,536. Where we need to subtract 2. Why? One is for the network address. Another one is for the broadcast address. So 2 power 16 minus 2 will be 65,534 hosts possible per network. That is, we can use 65,534 IP addresses when we go for class B. Let's take a class B address which is 172.15.150.1. So in this case, 172.15 should be fixed. Any computer that starts with the IP address 172.15 will be belonging to this network. Why? Because the first two octets are network portion. Let's say there is a computer with 172.100.100 and another computer with 172.5.5.5. These two computers do not belong to the same network. Why? The first octet is matching but not the second octet. So when we go for class B, the first two octets should match because the default mask says the first two octets should match. And coming to class C, the first three portions is the network portion and the last portion, the last octet is the host portion. So if there is an IP address, the first three octet represents the network and the last octet alone represents the host. So in class C, the default subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 and these three octets should match and this is only the host portion. So this host portion, just observe, there is only one octet. One octet means 8 bits. 8 bits means the starting value can be 0 and the last value can be 255. So a maximum of 256 values can be possible. Out of 256, only 254 are usable. Why? The first IP address should be reserved for the network and the last IP address should be reserved for the broadcast address. So out of 256 hosts that are possible, we can use only 254. So how many bits here for host portion? It's only 2 power 8 minus 2. And what about the bits for the number of network? The number of bits for network is 24. 
Out of these 24 bits, 3 bits are reserved for identifying the class. So, 24 minus 3 is 21. So, 2 power 21 networks are possible with class C. And in each network, we can have a maximum of 254 usable hosts. For class D and class E, we don't have the default subnet mask. Let's see more about the subnet mask. This subnet mask can be represented in decimal like this. This is for each class. If we convert this into binary, we will be having all ones in the first octet and remaining zeros in other three octets. When we go for class B, it's 255-255-00. So we'll be having all ones in the first two octets and zeros in the next two octets. When we go for class C, we have all ones that is 255 in first three octets. That is all ones in the first three octets and zero in the last octet. So we need not write the subnet mask as a lengthy one. So we can go for a slash notation. How many number of ones in this? It's 255.0.0.0 for class A, right? How many ones we have? So we have eight ones. So we can represent the class A subnet mask as slash eight. For class B subnet mask, we have 16 ones. So we can represent this as slash 16. So we can represent class C subnet mask as slash 24 because we have 24 ones here. So subnet mask can be represented either in the decimal format or in the binary format or simply slash notation. Let's see more about the subnet mask. We know IP address will be always accompanied with the subnet mask. Let's take an example. This example says that the IP address is 192.168.10.10 .10 and we are given with the subnet mask 255.255.255.0. So when the subnet mask is given, it says that three portions are 255, right? All bits are one in these three portions or in these three octets. So when these three octets are 255, so the first three octets in an IP address, that is the first three octets in an IP address is the network portion and the last octet alone is the host portion. So any IP address that starts with 192.168.10, they belong to the same network. For example, if a device is having an IP address 192.168.20, so the device which is having this IP address and the device which is having the IP address 192.168.20. something will not belong to the same network. So the communication cannot be established between these two devices with the help of a switch. Because a switch is a local area network device, it can make communication possible between the same network or among the devices in the same network. If we want to make the communication to happen for two different networks, then a router is needed. So in this case, any IP that starts with 192.168.10, they do belong to the same network. So 192.168.10.02, 192.168.10.255 is the maximum, where 192.168.10.0 cannot be used for the host. And similarly, the last IP address, which is 192.168.10.255 cannot be used. It is for broadcast purpose. I hope now you can understand the role of subnet mask. To define the network and the host portions of an IP address, or simply an address, a device use a separate 32-bit pattern called a subnet mask. This subnet mask defines the network portion and the host portion. So the subnet mask does not actually contain the network or the host portion. So the subnet mask is not carrying anything with it. It doesn't know what is the network and what is the host. With the help of IP address only, we can come to know what is the network portion and what is the host portion. So it just says where to look for these portions, that is the network portion and the host portion in a given IPv4 address. I hope you are clear with this. We have recalled the various classes of IPv4 address. We understood the purpose of subnet mask and we identified whether the nodes belonging to the same network or different network with the help of subnet mask. I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching.